Hello, my name is Eva and you're watching YPO Training Series. Today, we will speak about the creation of products in Odoo. There are several ways in Odoo to create a product. The easiest one is to go to the menu Sales, to select the item product. Then, you press the button Create. The first thing you have to enter is the product name. You can enter a product name exactly the way you want. In my case, I will enter Luxury Bag. Then you can choose whether you can, you can sell the product or only purchase it. This is useful when you want to separate the raw materials that you use for your production with the products that you sell to the customers. In some of the products you're going to be purchasing and selling. In this case, the luxury bag, I will be purchasing it and selling it. So I press on the other information we can enter for a product is the image. So I can select an image, pressing here on the edit button. In my case, I have a picture of an orange bag that I can select. When you choose a picture, think about taking a picture that is not too big so that it doesn't slow the whole system. The next information we want to enter is the product type. In Odoo, there are three product types. The first is service. So this is quite clear. The second is consumable and the third is stockable product. The question you may ask yourself is, what is the difference between a consumable product and a stockable product? It's simple. When you use consumable product, the system will do as if this product is always available. So basically, it will not check if you have enough products in your stock. For stockable product, the system will consider that you can only deliver what you have in stock. In my case, I use consumable product. The unit of measure is the next information you have to enter. Think about entering the unit of measure from the very start, because once the product has been created, the unit of measure cannot be changed. You can enter then the sale price. We will see later how to manage price lists in order to have prices that can be customer specific. In this case, we sell this luxury bag for 100 euro. As you see, there is no currency sign next to my price. It means that the price is always in the local currency. In order to have prices in another currency, we will have to use the price lists. You can set a product active or inactive just by clicking this checkbox. You can also use an internal reference. The internal reference is very practical because it helps you select the product very fast when creating sales order or purchase orders. So in this case, I will put an internal reference LB for luxury bag minus one. Below, I can describe a little bit my product. This information will also appear on other documents. I will write something about this luxury bag. Let's move on to the next tab, procurement. The first field to define is the costing method. If you put the costing method to standard price, this is the same price that's going to be used in calculating 
the stock value. You can also change it to the average price or to the real price. In the average price, the system will calculate what is the average value of the stock based on all the purchases you have done. The real price is all about identifying the actual price of an article based upon the purchase price and the removal strategy. The cost price here you enter 45 euro. I can also change the purchase unit of measure. This is very useful if you buy things in boxes and sell it in units. Now the supply chain information. The supply chain information defines first whether you buy a product or not. So the first thing I do is I select buy. The other information is make to order. It means that you will only produce or purchase the bag if you have an order. So if I want to purchase a bag as soon as I have an order, I can click here on make to order. This way, the system will automatically create a purchase order as soon as I have a sales order that is confirmed. Let's continue. You can manage the suppliers for a specific item. This is very useful so that you have all the information to directly purchase the item. In my case, I first choose a supplier, Crazy Hair, and then I can enter the supplier product name. This can be different from the product name that you have. In our case, we had Luxury Bag, but they don't call it Luxury Bag, they call it Standard Bag. And they may also have a supplier code. It differs from yours. So we will enter their supplier code. You can choose whether you have a minimal quantity to order. This depends on the contract you have with your supplier. In this case, there is no minimal quantity. The next information is the delivery lead time. This means how many days do you have to wait until you can receive the goods. This information is normally given to you by the supplier. Here I will enter 8 days for this very supplier. Let me save this information. You can now enter a description for the supplier. The information you write here is the information that is going to be received by your supplier whenever you send a request for quotation a quotation or a purchase order. In our case, we want to write a description about the way the bag has to be produced. So, I write. This being done, let's move on to the next tab, Inventory. You have the status of the product that will help you Define whether the product is used, is about to be used, is obsolete, or is in development. In most very small company not producing, it is not relevant. But in producing company or in engineering companies, it is really important to know exactly what is the status. The other point is when you know that the product is end of cycle of life cycle. This has an impact on the way you want to use the product. For instance, knowing that you have this product on life cycle, you may decide to make a marketing campaign in order to get rid of the last pieces. The product manager, you can define who in your company is managing the product. In my case, I would define manager one. If you are in Europe, in the European Union, you may use the Intrastat code, but this is only useful if you export or import the product. Let's move on to information related to the storage. In the case you have the warehouse defined in detail, you can directly put 
the right the role in the case in which this specific product is always stored. You have other informations that are relevant for packaging or for export or to calculate the transport costs. These informations are the volume, the gross weight and the net weight. Let's move on to the sales tab. In the sales tab, you have information related to the standard warranty you offer for this product. The second information, very important for you, for the availability to promise, is the customer lead times. This indicates how long it takes you to be able to deliver your customer. Description for quotations. It is quite interesting to have nice description for the quotations, especially with the new functionality of Odoo in version 8, the online quotations. The text you will put in the quotation should be informative and also engaging for your customer so that he knows exactly what he's going to get and he's motivated to buy it. In this case, I will describe a little bit my beautiful orange luxury bag. Now, once you have done it, you can go on to the accounting. In the accounting, you have the internal category. Internal category allows you to organize your product. Behind the internal categories are other information related to the valuation, the income. We have goods and services. This is obviously some goods. If you want to know exactly what is behind the specific category, you can click on the button on the right side and you will see the definition. As you see, there are quite a lot of information and it's very useful because you can only define the information, especially information like account stocks or the income and expense accounts. You can define them on the internal category once and it is valid whenever you select it, meaning that the creation of the product would not require to think about what account you want to use. In this case, we only have customized the income and the expense account. Because I have selected the information here, there is no reason for me to select the information again. The only thing that is still to be done are the inventory valuation. The inventory valuation defines how the stock value is calculated. It can be either done manually with when you select periodical or it can be done in real time. Best practice is to have this done in real time. But in order for the inventory valuation in real time to be correct, you need to have defined in the procurement a costing method and the cost price that is accurate. Let's go back to accounting. When you set this in real time, you also need to configure properly the stock input and the stock output accounts that are the counterpart of all the stock movement done in the system. At the moment, I put it on manual. So, what needs to be done are the customer taxes and the supplier taxes. For the customer sales, in my case, I have SG23. I can type it in and it appears. For the supplier taxes, I have PG23. I type it, select it, and it appears here. Let us first save our product. We have finished the creation of my luxury bag. If I need to do changes, I just press on the edit button. If I'm unhappy with the new changes, I click on discard. Very important, if you are selling to market where the language is different from your standard language, you should work on translating the product names. You click on this button here to translate the product names. And you see here I have for French the possibility to type in another value. I will choose 
sac à main de luxe. I can say this. You may remember that we had the opportunity to have an internal reference. Now you see, when you have the internal reference, it is much easier to recognize the information. In this case, I will type in the internal reference and B for luxury bag minus the O for orange. And I can save the product. Very often, you have two products that are almost exactly the same, with a slight difference, maybe the price and maybe the picture. The easiest way in this case is to duplicate an existing product. To do this, you press on more and you do duplicate. The system always writes next to duplicate, copy, in the name. So, this one I will call Luxury Bag Blue. The price is different, so I will change, update the price. And also, you see the internal, diff the internal reference does not exist, so I will type it LB B as internal reference. I save it. I need to have exactly the picture corresponding. So let me edit it and change the picture. I click here on this button and now the system presents to me the possibility to choose another picture. I choose the picture of this beautiful bag. You see, it's exactly the same bag, but it's in blue. Well, that's it for today. If you want to have a look at Odoo, visit our webpage, demosas.ybioservices.net.